like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it spreads its wings that's what we call soaring it does not fly the eagle soars there are people who come to church and sit together but number one they do not agree with the vision they do not connect with the grace and they wonder why simple things do not happen the bible says there is a spiritual state unity is more than togetherness it is agreeing in mind that when your prophet stands over you and says in jesus name be blessed you don't sit arguing and say all oh, this no 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 one person spoke nimrod kush let us build they said we agree that means if word of life agrees that there are certain dimensions of exploits that must happen this year that if you agree the only force at the time they made this statement though they, the the bible does not record the holy spirit coming to assist them the blessedness of redemption was not even there to support them how much more you now the power of the word the power of the prophetic the power of the holy spirit for there the lord had commanded the blessing even sufficiency even continuity all that it makes for you to stand and to last can happen in a place where you connect there's unity there do you know what that means you can come to a church like this and you can be here for many years you are together but not yet in unity and somebody can come for the first time and say i believe i i may not know much spiritually but lord i know this is a man you have sent this aaron as the oil comes do you know when you stand in front of a shower to take your bath it does not matter the part that is closest to the shower the remaining part of the body is happy because it will eventually reach every part literally if the hand disconnects from that structure it may not have an opportunity to have that experience unity genesis 11 let's hear god's verdict verse 6 hear what god himself the and the lord said, said and the lord said behold behold the people is one the people is one and they have all one language they have one language and this they begin to do uh-huh and now nothing will restrain from them which they have imagined to do nothing will be restrained from them who are the them the them who are united god himself is speaking that the states these people have assumed in the spirit there is no power in existence that can stop them from doing what they have imagined to do that means when a husband and wife agree in unity that this year we will build even if all they have in their account is five thousand he's saying that state of unity attracts something from the realm of the spirit hold on i wish i had time please don't miss tomorrow i wish i had time i would have taught you how the strong man is bound <laughs> listen carefully jesus daddy jesus is casting out a devil and they said he is using beelzebub is that true the prince of the demons and jesus now makes a statement and he says if i cast out demons by beelzebub by who does your fathers and all your leaders cast then he says any kingdom listen carefully now he he's speaking within the context of unity any kingdom divided against itself thank you for being good bible students so he's talking of unity then he says if you enter a man's house you cannot do anything to that man except you bind him so question from what you have learned how do you bind a strong man disunite what makes him powerful are you learning now watch this for as long as jesus came upon the earth and father son and, and holy spirit were in agreement there was absolutely nothing that could be done against jesus the only condition for jesus to die 
was that the Holy Ghost had to leave him. That, that there had to be a disruption in that tripartite structure. That was why the same spirit came back to raise him from the dead. Listen carefully. Are we together? So the only way you bind a man is to create something that disrupts that structure of unity in the spirit. When the devil wants to attack a family, what he does is he begins to use offense, begins to use whatever. The goal is that he wants to penetrate that family. But he knows that once there is unity, there is a blessing there. And the blessing is life. The life there is everything that must be at work for that family to work. So what Satan does is he starts to use all the elements of the flesh to bind their hands. When the devil wants to destroy a church, he first observes the unity structure of that church. Hear me carefully. And he now begins to orchestrate events that now bind the hands of the people. For there the Lord had commanded the blessing. When Satan wants to bind a business, what does he now do? He, what Satan is interested in is the unity structure. So, well, listen to me. For as long as Jesus acknowledged the authority of the Father and the ministry of the Holy Spirit and said, I and my Father are one, Satan could come to him and could not do anything. But finally, Satan now found an occasion where the Spirit of God left him. He had to leave him. That was why Jesus cried. When Jesus says, do not take this cup off me, the cup was not death. He had been saying he would die. The cup was that for the first time, the Trinity would be disunited. When he hung on the cross, he said, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani. That means, my father, you've turned your face away from me. Because at that point, he had become sin. When Satan wanted to destroy the apostolic structure, the first thing he did was to start destroying the unity structure. So he came through, he came directly to Jesus and then he now manipulated Peter's compassion. Satan can use good things to kill. It doesn't always have to be evil. Are we together? So Peter now was trying to address, oh Jesus, don't talk about redemption. Then he now came through Judas. The most important thing is that he succeeded in destabilizing that unity structure. I will give you the last scripture and then we'll pray. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. <laughs> now, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, if you're a believer and you can see anything projected there, please read the remaining part. One to read. They were all one accord. Hold on. This is the definition of unity right there. One accord. Not in one place. The most important thing is the accord, not the place. They can be in the same place and not be in one accord. Men, hear me. Every noble man in word of life has an assignment this night. Go back home and restore the unity structure of your family. Because Satan... If you do not restore the unity structure between husband to his wife, husband to the children, stand as a formidable force. And the only power in existence that can stop you is God. To the point that the Bible says, if you do something against your wife and disrupts that unity structure, even your prayer... Let me wrap up. I hope you are hearing what I'm telling you. Restoring the unity structure sometimes would demand saying, I am sorry. If that is how far you need to go, do it. 
it will demand saying i i didn't know better than i know now now i know better whatever it will take to restore the unity structure there are many prayers you will not pray unity will pray the prayer for you are we together that means the primary assignment of every leader in word of life is not just to display skill worship team protocol always be sensitive to the unity structure the moment you see something happening forget about what the physical case is it's an attack from the realm of the spirit hallelujah and can i tell you you were fortunate and blessed to have your father and prophet one time the head of the entire christian you now understand the prophetic implication all in one man to bind the body of christ in unity now you know better you know what god was doing there has to be some noble fathers today that will go home and call their wives and say you know what we are not two political parties the devil is a liar we are tired of failing in spite of our personal prayers you can't lock yourself in the room praying and fasting i'm shouting there no let's come together in one accord hold on please listen listen give me acts let's continue the next thing that will happen is my prophecy for you the moment there was one accord the next thing that happened suddenly ah suddenly always follows unity suddenly a job comes suddenly the pregnancy comes suddenly a new mantle comes upon the man of god not just because you prayed and fasted alone you attained a state where god had commanded the blessing even life life means whatever it will take for you to succeed he said the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy but i am come that ye may have life and he says to have it more abundantly let's finish the scripture suddenly and suddenly there came there came a sound from heaven a sound as from of heaven, a rushing mighty wind as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where and, they it, were and it filled all the house and there appeared unto them uh -huh. clothed tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them stop the key word in this scripture is not the cloven tongues is each of them who did not benefit from the unity nobody it sat upon each of them that means in a state of unity when the blessing comes there is nobody who will say i was just a spectator it's such on each so when the financial miracle comes it sits on each of them when the breakthrough comes it sits man of god for you and your leaders when the anointing comes it sits the bible says it sat on each of them it sat on each of them there were times in the bible where people were together but were not united for instance in the pool called bethesda the bible says there laid many important folks not only one person they were together but everybody was for himself and there was a man as a result who remained there for 38 years because there was no unity only one person could be blessed there were 10 lepers who sat together everybody for himself but when they were in one accord the men in this assembly i stand on the grace of our father to charge you there is more that you can do can i tell you individually you may show expertise but together you will produce results
Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine uh -huh. and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every one soul. Uh -huh. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believe we are together. Hold on. This was a secret. That they remained steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, the early church, in fellowship, in prayer, and in breaking of bread. Are we together now? And the Bible says many wonders. Life. There the Lord had commanded the blessing. And what is that blessing? Sufficiency. Whatever must be available for you to succeed. And he says, and all that believed were together. That was a secret. And had all things in common. Next verse. And sold their possessions uh -huh. and goods. And parted them to all men as every man had need. As every man has need. Let's read the last verse. It says, and they, praising God and having favor. No, 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 with, no, 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 no. Go back to 46, please. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, in the temple and breaking, breaking bread, bread from, bread from house, house to house did eat their meat with, with gladness and singleness of hearts finally praising and, god and having favor with all the people what was the result and the lord added to stop, the church stop stop it does not matter where the addition came the key word is and the lord added to your business and the lord added to your children and the Lord. To the mantle on your life and the Lord. We are going to pray. No man can come into a strong man's house. What made the man strong? Not muscles. Unity. Jesus said, a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. So what makes the man strong is unity. A stronger than he means a more united than he. When he comes, he can set division. And that weakness goes. Let me tell you one of the reasons why God is powerful is because of the honor to the trinity structure of the triune nature. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The one word one does not mean singular. It means unity. Even Jesus was praying in John chapter 17. When you read from verse 1, the Bible says, He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. When you read verse 3 now or so, he says, and this is life eternal that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. And then he now began to speak about unity. He says that they may be one. Even as we are one. That means they, that they discover the hidden power that is resident in being one. Unity does not mean uniformity. Unity means for one purpose. The son was secured enough to acknowledge the authority of the father. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he never called himself father. Not once. He called the spirit of God father, Abba. He called father God father. And he was satisfied being the son. Yet the Bible says they were one. So unity does not mean the same position. Unity does not mean sharing the same rank. It means coordinating your strength no matter how small or great to as insist that you achieve the same thing. Are we together? Please stand everybody. We're about to pray. If you can hold hands together, hold hands together, please. Lord, make us instruments.
of your peace where there is hatred let your love be 